Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to the SLT Millimeter Wave Learning Series, our free EMF educational series discussing 5G radiation and millimeter wave. Today's topics include the effects of EMF and millimeter waves presented by Lloyd, the effects of RF and millimeter wave sources presented by Magda. Then we have um, Rob and Bruce are doing, are gonna introduce us to the millimeter wave meter and the difference of 5G frequencies and measurement protocols. And we have Keith who's gonna do new discoveries of millimeter wave sources. And then last but not least is Orem and he will be doing the hunting millimeter wave towers in Southern California. So without any delay, this gentleman almost needs no introduction, but I will give him an introduction. Uh, um, one of my building biology colleagues and good friends, Orm Miller um, from uh, Los Angeles, California, will now present uh, some discoveries he's found with uh, um, 5G millimeter cellular um, radiation. So Orm, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Rob. And thanks to all of the presenters that we've seen uh, very uh, illuminating and informative. Uh, so I will start sharing the screen here and I will now start uh, the slideshow here. There we go. All right. So- um, Sorry, Orm, before you start, just a, just a quick note, uh, we are doing Q and A at the end. So uh, please stick around. Um, we'll let uh, Orm finish his presentation, and then we'll 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 stay on as long as we need. Hopefully, it won't be too long, but uh, we'll stay as long as we need to get everyone's questions answered. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Uh, and I will, uh, um, in the interest of time, I know it's getting uh, long uh, or late here. I, I will. Um, so I will I'll go through this quickly. Um, the slides that I prepared here. Uh, some of them are repeat videos. I, I may not even show some of them. Um, this slide presentation, I know for, for a fact, uh, and others uh, will be available from Tony and the Safe Living Technologies team on their website at safelivingtechnologies.org, uh, .com, excuse me. And then you click on education, and then there's a drop down menu. And the first item there is MM Wave Learning. Click on that, and there will be a link in there to these slides. Um, and and the, uh, what uh, Tony uh, and his staff, and Elizabeth, have been doing is grouping together like Rob's slides and then my slides. I will also have these slides available on my website, which is at the bottom of this slide, createhealthyhomes.com. Uh, and uh, so this afternoon, I'll get them up there so you can go through this. Because So here we go. Um, one second. Let me admit that person. Okay. So now... Um, so uh, this is re sorry to, to interrupt, Lauren, but your um, the um, the screen sharing um, uh, the status bar is is blocking some of the presentation. There. Uh, if you could elevate that up a little bit. All right. Um, I'm going to try and do that, Rob. Let's see. Now that's interesting because my hmm. I'm going to try and let, raise it up but I can't grab, oh, there we go. Now I can see my, there. Uh, sorry that that's there. You guys can see that, hmm? Darn. Huh. All right, well, all right, in any event. Um, okay. So I'm hitting the, uh, the, the forward and back key, which has worked in the past. Oh, sorry. Um, but it's not working here. So let me stop the share and uh, get out of this uh, and enter again, sorry. One second here. All right. <clears throat> All right, here we go. <clears throat> so today's presentation will contain a synopsis of what I've shown you in the uh, first two um, learning sessions. Um, I've been a beta tester since early June. Um, and just in summary, most millimeter wave antennas that I have found are on busy boulevards, 
mostly from Verizon, but not always. And I'll show you a non-Verizon one uh, today. Uh, I have also noted 4G, LTE, and uh, Verizon low band uh, antennas. And let me let this person in. Oh, I wish my cursor would show up. Shoot, okay. Um, and then uh, these findings are a snapshot in time in one location, and we look forward to input from our colleagues, which we're now uh, receiving. So I'm not going to go over this slide. I, I went over this uh, the first time that I showed, but but uh, come back, look at these slides, and just review this material because this shows a synopsis of the low band uh, offerings by for 4G and 5G by the three major carriers in the United States: Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T. The mid band offerings, and then the high band or millimeter wave band, which is what's measured with the uh, blue millimeter wave meter, uh, and that is primarily Verizon, but there is uh, some service in urban areas by AT&T and T-Mobile as well. Uh, and I just want to show you that the 4G is primarily from six or 700 megahertz to 1,000 uh, megahertz or one gigahertz as um, uh, Magna mentioned earlier. Uh, and then the mid-band is from one to six uh, gigahertz. Uh, and this is all the 4G uh, uh, real estate. And then uh, you have mid-band in the three to four megahertz range. So the high band, the millimeter wave band starts 20 gigahertz and, and above from there. And again, <clears throat> the download speeds are in the hundreds of megahertz, uh, megabits per second when you get up into the mid band uh, 5G uh, coverage and connection. And then the millimeter wave is uh, in the, uh, well, actually this is showing millimeter wave um, average download speeds a couple of years ago from AT&T and T-Mobile in the um, 250, 280 megabits per second range. Verizon is 600 and, and higher uh, for the millimeter wave service. Uh, but it turns out that the average time spent on millimeter wave uh, uh, connection, connectivity, is still in the, just a handful of percentage. Uh, as of two years ago, it was only 1% of all cellular activity. And then you'll see here on this screen, uh, looking on the far right, that grouping uh, of the four companies, USA, Cellular is in the Midwest and uh, some of the East Coast, uh, mid-Atlantic states. Um, it's, you know, three, four percent in urban areas, uh, the red at the bottom. That's the millimeter wave coverage. So it's not as extensive as we think, not yet. Um, and then the uh, blue, the, the yellow, excuse me, is all uh, 5G. That would mean the low band nationwide 5G, which is not being formed. The mid band 5G, which may be being formed, can be down to two gigahertz. I don't know how much of the C band or if any is beam formed. We're going to find that out when I speak with the uh, technicians at uh, the uh, booths at the, mili um, the 5G conference that I'm going to in September. So beam formed signals are, this is, this is the details. And I updated this this morning from what, from the screen, this same screen uh, or slide uh, a few weeks ago. So beam formed signals are still on demand as they initially were since the early years of 5G, that means five years ago, starting in 2018. Currently measured millimeter wave antenna beacon signals are now always on. Um, and uh, the, the beacon signals five years ago for the first few years of the uh, 5G um, activity from the cell carriers, the, the beacon signals were uh, uh, for a, a few milliseconds or nanoseconds, literally a few times per second, uh, and they were very weak. They were minus 60, minus 70 decibels per meter, um, which is equivalent, and this came up in the chat, to 0 0.001 microwatt per meter squared or 0 0.01. But now this, this, this activity that we're measuring for the last few weeks, which has been present for perhaps for a year, we don't know, um, is perhaps the beacon signal. I need to find out more about this. And because there's now uh, higher and more uh, strong with higher uh, power densities as measured with the safe and sound millimeter wave meter, when that gets triggered, as you'll see, and as I showed um, the last time that we met. So these be millimeter wave beacon signals is consistent in power flux density uh, from side to side across the full 120 degree wide transmission, this, these beacon signals. And they're just like 4G and low and mid-band 5G in that regard. And then the power density of the millimeter wave beacon signal that gets triggered by data activity on your phone if you have this if your phone matches the uh, the company if your phone your carrier matches the carrier that put in the, the millimeter wave antenna that's in front of you 
then that gets triggered and that that beamform signal is significantly um it's still less than the 4g uh signals that uh, are there uh, at the same distance and I, i'll show you that in one of the slides so I measure generally only 100 to 1,000, maybe a little bit stronger, uh, microwatts per meter squared uh, with both the stub and the horn antennas on the safe and sound pro a meter uh, versus you know easily 10,000 to a quarter of a million at the same distance from the 4G antenna that was in the same um, uh, antenna, our same location. Millimeter wave beacon signals dissipate quickly with distance were not measured beyond a half to one full city block as I walked away. Um, and then again, you compare that to 4G and low and uh, mid band 5G that travel at higher power densities for a mile or more. Um, I'm not measuring millimeter wave 5G signals in residential and suburban neighborhoods. I found one example of that, but generally otherwise, if there is a uh, cell antenna, it's usually uh, mid band 5G or low to mid band 4G. And finally, mi millimeter wave 5G signals are so far confined to main boulevards with foot traffic and commercial and apartment buildings. So it's primarily an outdoor phenomenon. It's not a coverage spectrum. Uh, the industry doesn't consider it to be a coverage spectrum, um, not the millimeter wave service. It's supplemental. It's very high speed. It, it doesn't penetrate through walls. So it's really for out, people who are outside and in public places where they put these millimeter wave transmitters in the um, ceilings of convention centers, airports, metro stops, uh, and, and uh, so on. Uh, so it does not penetrate buildings, building walls well. Shielding would be highly effective when used, provided that it's solid. Um, and uh, we'll get into that. We'll see that lower down here. Millimeter waves do penetrate low E glass, approximately 50 to 70%. Uh, film could be effective on windows because it's, it's relatively uniform. Um, metal mesh screen and RF curtains are less so due to holes that the millimeter waves can pass through. The beacon signals were not dependent upon what my phone was doing. Um, the Verizon millimeter wave antenna beacon signal is present uh, whether my Verizon phone, uh, iPhone had the 5G enabled um, or disabled. Um, let's see, sorry. Uh, Bruce, are you able to, are you still co-host? Because I can't admit, uh, Kevin, he wants to get in here. I'll have to stop the screen share in order to do that. Gosh, I just don't have the, um, let me try this. There we go. Okay. Uh, now let's see, I have to go back to play this. There we go. Okay. Um, so the, the Verizon millimeter wave antenna beacon signal is present, whether the iPhone that I had had the 5G enabled, disabled, or in airplane mode, the beacon signal was not strong, uh, as I mentioned, in the early uh, years of 5G. I already covered that. My Verizon iPhone did trigger the beamform signal, uh, and it admitted uh, the levels, my iPhone admitted levels uh, that I measured on the Safe and Sound Pro meter millimeter wave meter of greater than half a million only when engaged in data activity that that then triggered the connection or the beamform signal from the antenna to my phone. And then my phone sent out a very strong signal as well. So the millimeter wave 5G signals from the Verizon iPhone are not present when my iPhone was not near a millimeter wave antenna. And you can also disable the 5G capacity or function on your phone. Only phones from the same carrier that installed the millimeter wave antenna will have uh, five trans 5G transmissions from the phone turned on by that antenna. So I hope you all understand what I'm saying here. So if I was in front of it, and I sh I'll show you this in, in a uh, video, when I'm in front of a, uh, with my Verizon iPhone 14, when I'm in front of a millimeter wave antenna that I confirmed is a millimeter wave antenna, but from an AT&T, uh, or T-Mobile uh, antenna, uh, that did not, my phone and data uh, activity did not trigger that beamform signal. So I did measure higher millimeter wave readings on my millimeter wave RF meter when passersby walked by, presumably with their Verizon cell phone triggered by the Verizon antenna that I was in front of. And uh, these high RF levels from cell phones may be strong, a stronger health threat to the user, 
um, and to those standing nearby, then actual millimeter wave signals from the 5G antenna. Sorry, I have to let this person in. There we go. Uh, and the millimeter wave signals from the 5G antenna are beam formed. Um, we do not know if the RF signals from the cell phone triggered by the millimeter wave antenna are also beam formed from the cell phone. That I will um, look into when I go to the conference next month. So considering that you will all likely not see millimeter wave signals in uh, residential areas, but the millimeter wave antenna is still valuable for, re particularly for those of us who are practitioners, for reassuring clients that they do not have this dreaded 5G, which uh, in this case would be the, the millimeter wave uh, signals outside their home. And they're greatly relieved by that uh, knowledge. So I, I do use this uh, meter, the millimeter wave meter outside of every home I go to. I'm the clients often there with me and I'll show them what the levels are with the green meter and in the low and mid band uh, range and, and there is activity, but then I turn on the millimeter wave antenna and it shows generally not much, not activity in the residential areas and they're, they're happy about that. You will also see where millimeter wave service does exist in urban areas. And there are pe many people who live in urban areas and they often have a problem uh, as uh, Magda mentioned. And um, let in this person here, um, and you know there are there are clients who live in these urban areas and they are uh, at risk. I showed you that in the videos in the the first uh, session that we had in late June. Uh, also, you can show how strong and pervasive the 4G LTE and low to mid band 5G is with your Pro, Safe and Sound Pro meter and other RF meters in common use and uh, the Gigahertz Solutions models that we use in our profession. And you can also show how strong the RF levels are from the portable wireless devices that many people have in their personal space and they're not aware of that, including EHS people, electrically hypersensitive people who are our clients who are really focusing because on the 5G, uh, the millimeter wave 5G outside their homes because that's all they're reading about. Uh, and then so I'm gonna go over conclusions again by Mitch Marchand uh, when he met with me in July, early July, and we showed those videos. Beam form signals are fairly significant from the millimeter wave antennas. We have three separate effects when in proximity to these antennas. Number one, a 24 seven background level across the cone, 120 degrees wide, of which I'm now calling a beacon signal. We'll find out more next month what that is from the uh, trade show. Um, sorry, let's put this person in, there we go. Uh, the Number two, the, uh, the phone, if you have the same phone as the carrier that put the antenna in place, will trigger a beamform signal from that antenna to where you are. It, it can buy a geolocate you in front of it. Um, and it's a spotlight. Uh, that was the term that Mitch used to the phone or tablet, three to four feet wide. And the meter read, uh, well, it maxed out at 31,000 microwatts. Now you can put the attenuator on and then retest. That's what the uh, horn antenna. At the same time, Mitch and I found that the background exposure level across the full cone elevates slightly as well for everyone else maybe 100 microwatts or so from what it was. It could be a six, 800, 1,000 microwatts. It goes up about 100 when someone is getting a beamform signal directly to where they are. Uh, so con uh, continuing on with the conclusions from both of us, the beamform signal is fairly significant from the millimeter wave antenna triggered by phones from the same cell carrier, as I mentioned. Three separate effects in proximity. I just mentioned those in the previous slide. Millimeter, millimeter wave antennas are still rare in residential neighborhoods. That's what I've found so far. Uh, millimeter wave signals are blocked by solid walls. Uh, uh, yes, by, by, by walls uh, and then by solid shielding materials, including foil and paint. And they're not blocked as well. Uh, the millimeter wave signals are not blocked as well by uh, glass. I mentioned that earlier. And I showed you that in a video in the first uh, learning session in late June, nor by fabric or mesh because of the holes in them. Whereas all of these things uh, do block the low and mid band uh, signals because they have a much uh, longer wavelength of you know, 12 to 15 inches in, in, in six, 700, 800, 900 megahertz uh, frequency range called the, the low band, mid band, you know, 1800, 1900, 20, uh, 21, 2500, those are around uh, 
five to seven inches and even three inches when you get up into the mid band. So there's a big difference. Um, and these shielding materials do block them better, uh, even the um, fabric and the mesh screen than in the millimeter wave uh, signals. So recommendations for further testing, uh, use your cell phone for this, uh, from the same cell carrier if you want to, uh, to see this in action as a tester. Uh, as the millimeter wave antenna to trigger a beamform signal. So you might want to get a, a phone from Verizon, whether that's the one you use for your personal use. Um, you may have been a T-Mobile or AT&T customer for years and don't want to switch, but you might need to still get another Verizon phone for testing purposes to turn this on so you can see that phenomenon when you're, when you're testing. Uh, because Verizon predominates the millimeter wave 5G service in the US. Um, use your attenuator when measuring with the horn antenna as a signal from the antenna and the phone will exceed the rated capacity for the ant horn antenna, which is 31,000 microwatts. And notice an you'll notice an increase in the average values. And let me let this person in. This is something that Mitch Marshawn mentioned, which was very interesting. Um, he said the average uh, setting, which we've all had for years on the Safe and Sound Pro uh, meter, which I haven't really paid attention to, but he said, you'll see more activity with a millimeter wave meter on the average setting, because that means that there's uh, less downtime or, or gaps or times, which could only last for a, a second or two where there's no activity. In other words, the, these, be, these signals, these pulse signals, especially when the beam forming is going on, they're much more packed together and you'll see a higher reading in the average. And that, that uh, explains that as an interesting finding. So this is what these look like. Um, uh, you can see there, this is from the very first uh, group of slides that I presented in late June. Uh, that those are three millimeter wave antennas uh, pointing in um, three different directions, covering 120 degrees between them um, for relatively full coverage in all directions. Uh, and now uh, here is the... Uh, this is a video. We also know that this is a 4G installation. Sorry. Because here we are nope. at Alta Avenue and 19th Street in Santa Monica. And this is the first 5G millimeter wave installation that I've seen in the residential neighborhood here, deep within the residential neighborhood, which is the lower part there. And then above that is a 4G or low band 5G installation. Um, but I Sorry. Darn, okay, I had to let that person in, but that stopped the video. So um, I'm going to uh, skip this in the interest of time, go on to the next slide. Uh, and you can watch this in the um, uh, when you click on the slides. Let's see here. We also know that this is a 4G installation. So here we are. Because well, Alton guys, Avenue I'm so, and sorry. And Street in Santa Monica, and this is the... There we go. Uh, and again, in the interest of time, this is a, a video that I showed in the previous uh, uh, slide deck uh, in Ju July. So I'll let you go back and listen to that. So my conclusion, is sorry. Uh, and the same thing with these summaries by Mitch Marsh on here. Uh, I'm gonna, so you want to summarize what you, uh, because we just don't have enough time. Another to go summary. Through again. Yeah. But I want to get to. Well, there's the. So we all. Okay, this is this is something that I need to, to show. So now we're just going to look at, we have two millimeter wave with both with the horn antennas. And one's going to be measuring what's coming from the antenna. The other one's going to be measuring what's coming from the phone. So Orem's going to hit the go button on the speed test. And what we'll see is... And it goes from 5G to when this kicks on, you'll see the UW appear. One second. There we go. So about 31,000 on the top one, about 2,000, 4,000, 7,000, depending how we hold it. 7,000. Look at that speed. And the, uh, there's no change in the sound for the upload or download. Yeah. The, the upload seems to be a little bit less of a, and now we're just back down to, now the speed test is done. But we went up to about a thousand on the upload. I'm not sure if that was just in a, how I was holding the meters, um, but it was 7,000 on the download on, on this upper one. Uh, so it seemed to be a little bit less on the upload. 
Uh, but this one stayed about the same regardless. It stayed about the 31,000. Coming from the phone? From the phone. Okay. Yeah. I wanted you to hear, see and hear that. So first of all, because there's a Verizon 5G millimeter wave antenna off in the distance there, um, and I have a Verizon iPhone, when I uh, initiated an, some activity in the data mode, which was to turn on speed tests, or you could uh, listen to an internet radio or, or download a video um, and, and, and play stream something in live uh, uh, time, you would be activating the beamform signal from that antenna off in the distance to your phone. Uh, and what Mitch said in, in, in the summary uh, is that it's, it's a three to four foot uh, beam that's right around you. Uh, and it, then it raises the millimeter wave uh, level a little bit uh, in, in the whole cone that's 120 degrees from side to side. But the point is, um, so the beamform signal came right at me and at the phone. Uh, and I got a speed uh, test sig uh, uh, speed. Uh, you can see it on the screen there, 2,600 megabits per second, which is incredibly fast. Uh, and then the, uh, and you heard the sound, you heard an, uh, a higher sound uh, come from that, um, uh, that, that was over and above the, uh, the, the background beacon signal. So let's go to the next slide here now, if I can do that. So now we're just going to, sorry, here it is. This is a new slide that I just took yesterday. So let's let, let's uh, listen to this video. So it's August 14th, 2023, and we're on the corner of Westgate and Gorham uh, Avenues here in uh, West Los Angeles. Uh, and what you're seeing here are 4G and uh, millimeter wave 5G antennas. The 4G, I don't know how many there are, there are two or three in the cylinder at the very top. And then there are three millimeter wave 5G antennas one pointing over my right shoulder, uh, the other two are pointing diagonally to the far left and far right, uh, 120 degrees out of phase with each other. So I'm going to show you um, something that I noticed about this in the next video. So here's what I found. First of all, when I turn on my Safe and Sound Pro 2 uh, meter, which measures between 200 megahertz and 8 to 10 gigahertz, that's the sound, you can hear that, of the 4G signal that's coming from the 4G antennas at the top, and perhaps mid-band 5G. Uh, and we're getting about 7,000 microwatts per meter squared here. So I'm gonna turn that off, and now I'm going to turn on the uh, millimeter wave uh, meter, which is in my other pocket here, coming right up. And this one, is with the stub antenna, and you'll hear the sound of the, uh, what we believe is the beacon signal coming out of this. And I do not believe that this is a Verizon uh, 5G antenna, unlike the ones that are in Santa Monica, not far from here, that I've showed you in other videos. I can stop it now. So now I have the safe and sound uh, millimeter wave meter here, and I'm going to turn on the... Uh, the sound. I'm going to clear it. And we have about 1200 and I got 2000 microwatts per meter squared. So this is clearly a millimeter wave antenna, but it's not Verizon. And how do I know that? Because on my Verizon phone here, it says LTE. It does not say 5G or UW, which is ultra wideband. The other thing I want to show you, sorry, that might have gone off. See the LTE in the upper right corner. Now I'm going to uh, turn on speed test. And remember, when I did a speed test in front of a Verizon tower, it turned on the beamformed 5G, which did not have, has not happened with this, and I'll show you that now. And also, it was 2,300 or 2,600 uh, megabits per second download speed. But that's not what's happening here. So. All right, here we go. I'm going to turn this on, turn on the sound, clear this. And this is uh, measuring 380 microwatts per meter squared. Listen as I start this. Connecting. And it's, it's started. Now, when we were doing this before, 
it would turn on the beamform signal from the Verizon 5G antenna. That's not happening here. And the speed test is only 278 um, megabits per second download speed. That's from 4G, uh, from another Verizon cell tower. That could be Verizon, but it could be AT&T or T-Mobile. I don't know. And then 24 megabits per second upload speed. So the point is, turn the sound off here. The point is, um, if you are not a customer of the 5G millimeter wave antenna, it's not going to trigger a beamform signal to you and to the phone that you're carrying. That's the point. Thank you. Okay, so I hope you all understood what I was uh, doing there uh, in, the, in that last slide, uh, that the uh, you only trigger that beamform signal to come to where you are, to your your phone, if your phone is the same company as the, the, the same carrier as the millimeter wave uh, antenna. Now, I knew it was a millimeter wave antenna because this was active. You know, the meter was active. The meter was showing the signal. Does that make sense to everyone? But it's not Verizon because, uh, you know, it, it, it said LTE, not 5G. But even if it one earlier, some of the Verizon 5G antennas said LTE until I did some date, something with data like turning on speed test and then the 5G came on, you know, and then when it, when it actually started connected and actually started uh, uh, when it turned on the beamform signal, then the UW ultra wideband showed up as well. Um, and then you heard the sound, uh, in, uh, the added sound, and then the, the number went up on this. Whereas that uh, two, 300, 270 something megabits per se, uh, microwatts per meter squared, never rose on this when, when the speed test was happening with this at that very last example. Very confusing, a lot of detail, and I hope that it made sense to you all. So Rob and Tony, at this point, that's I'm done with my presentation. So we're all the presenters are done. Uh, it's two hours and 20 minutes, but we'll definitely open it up for questions. So um, Rob, I'll take it away. And you're on mute right now. Thanks, Aurum. Um, and yeah, we we still need to measure. Like we've we basically understand the Verizon system fairly well now. I think um, so. Yeah, we need to test other carriers. We need to test other locations, you know, across the U.S. and Canada. We need to test other countries to see if there's any differences between what Aurum's results are and what others will find. So that that needs to be done. And we encourage all of you to do that. 